All right, guys, welcome back to Revive School. Here we are. This is kind of a, one of those numbers. Lesson 111. <laughs> Proverbs 24. There's no other option. Like, I can't choose 23, 25. Today is 24 and 24 only. You know, it's uh, specifically 34 verses. And my daughter, Sayla, she likes to actually highlight all of my uh, verses. She highlights the orange part for me. She's like, Dad, this is a long one. And I was like, man... She's right. And so I asked the Lord, Lord, instead of going through Proverbs 24 with like all of the, you know, 18 different sermons, Kevin, that we have as we've been going through this, I just asked the Lord to highlight one thing. And he did. I'm a little nervous about it today, but I'm excited. Today, you guys, we're going to actually be talking about raw and unfiltered Texas honey. Not really. We're going to be talking about honey. I mean, obviously, this is our friend, Nature Nate here. Actually, Nathan Sheets started this company. I love it because it even has a verse on here. Psalm 119, 103, thy word is sweeter than honey. Uh, it's a cool picture. And don't worry, it was made by American bees. <laughs> now you can say, Kyle, why on earth are you talking about Texas honey? I'm not. I'm talking about the word honey. Uh, it was pretty clear when I was reading through this. I, I, the Lord really wanted me to focus on that word. And so that's what we're going to do today, guys. Uh, it makes me a little nervous, to be honest, to do an entire lesson on the importance of honey and then how does it fit with Scripture? How does it tie into, you ready for this, our one word with Proverbs, which we haven't talked about in forever. Kevin, do you remember even our one word? It's wisdom. Wisdom. How does all of that, how does honey fit into wisdom? How does it fit into the gospel? How does it fit into Jesus? And we're going we're gonna to just try something today. Two things. By the end of this lesson today, I want you to be able to be like, I know what this means in Scripture. That's what I want you to do. I want you to know what this means. And number two, I'd like Kevin to actually take it and dip it in his mouth and start having some honey by the end of the lesson. Rich, do you think that's both viable goals? Bottoms up. But Kevin, here's to the honey. All right, this is going to be fun. I'm excited about this. So Proverbs 24, just so you know, when you walk through this, let's just get to the point if we can. Uh, like, but let's go through verse 1 to get to there is what I mean. In verse 1 it says, Don't envy evil men or desire to be with them. For their hearts plan violence, and the words stir up trouble. A house is built by wisdom, and it, it is established by understanding. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with every precious and beautiful treasure. It says in verse 5, A wise warrior is better than a strong one, and a man of knowledge than one of strength. Verse 6 and we could teach so much on this. For you should wage war with sound guidance. Victory comes with many counselors. In other words, surround yourself with wisdom and knowledge. And oh, by the way, that can come from those that you surround yourself with. In verse 7, it says, Wisdom is inaccessible to a fool. He does not open his mouth at the gate. Verse 8, the one who plots evil will be called a schemer. I like that word. A schemer. Go ahead and say it, Rich. Schemer. <laughs> schemer. <laughs> It's just kind of fun. A schemer. A foolish scheme is sin. And a mocker is detestable to people. Verse 10, if you do nothing in a difficult time, your strength is limited. Verse 11, rescue those being taken off to death and save those stumbling towards slaughter. This is a really powerful justice passage even right here, you guys. And in verse 12, it says, if you say, but we didn't know about this. Won't he weigh hearts consider it? He who weighs hearts consider it. Won't he who protects your life know? Won't he repay a person according to his work? In other words, you cannot always say, eh, never knew about that. He knows your motives. He knows. That's the backdrop of jumping into the first two verses that we want to talk about today. In verse 13 of Proverbs 24, it says, Eat honey, my son. Can you imagine Solomon talking to Rehoboam or Solomon talking to one of his sons? And his line is, Jude, I need you to eat some honey. That's an interesting line. Hey, eat honey. It's good for you. Like, I would just imagine doing a commercial right there, you guys. It's <laughs> eat honey, my son, for it is good. And the honeycomb is sweet to your palate. <laughs> palate. Would you try it? You guys, you have to understand something. We are very hands-on here at Revive School. Yeah, I just licked the lid, and now I'm just going to do what Scripture says. Eat honey, my son, for it is good. Please don't let it get in my beard. 
<laughs> there he goes. Oh my gosh. It is so sweet to my, my palate. Okay, just follow in biblical order. Oh, it's so good. Now watch in verse 14, then we're going to start teaching on honey. Realize that wisdom is the same for you. All right, so honey, he, told, he tells his son, hey, by the way, go back to verse 13. I need you to eat it because it's good for you and it's going to be sweet to your palate. So it's good and it's sweet. Now he's making the comparison of honey to wisdom. He says, realize wisdom is the same. So if he's saying it's the same, what is he saying? He's saying it's sweet and it's good for your palate. If you find it, you will have a future and your hope will never fade. So is he talking about honey or is he talking about wisdom? If he's talking about wisdom, he says, if you find it, you're going to have future and your hope you'll have, it will never fade. So if that's the case, you can know this. If you go back to verse 13, okay, just going to begin to draw just a little bit here. Honey is to wisdom and it is, it is good and it is sweet. And he also says in verse 14, you will have a future. And look at this. This is really interesting. Your hope will what? Never fade. And so let's kind of walk through. Number one, think about this. I'm going to give you six things, not even necessarily the benefits of honey, uh, a, a little bit. But number one, let, let's just say the obvious, the promised land. Okay, the promised land uh, is described in the Old Testament as the land flowing with what, gentlemen? Milk and honey. Milk and honey. And so there's this image of honey, of which, first of all, I'll just talk about this, the promised land. So, Kevin, if you would, would you go to Exodus 3, 6 through 8? The promised land with milk and honey. And I, I'm just going to tell you, there is a word I would use as it's an abundance. He says, I, God says, he continued, I'm the God of your father, God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. Verse 7, then the Lord said, I've observed the misery of my people in Egypt. He's having a dialogue with Moses. And I've heard them crying out because of their oppressors, and I know about their sufferings. Verse 8, I've come down to rescue my people, right, from the power of the Egyptians and to bring them from that land, which is where they're at with Egypt, from that land to a good and spacious land. What's going to be on that land? A land flowing with milk and honey, the territory of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. There's our famous Jebusites, the folks that started off Jerusalem. So Moses received a word that you're going to have a promised land flowing with this sticky substance, right? That's really what that is. This is going to be, it's going to be everywhere in this good and spacious land. And so this is kind of there, there's going to be an abundance. And over and over and over in scripture, you guys, it describes a promised land flowing with milk and honey. All right, number two, okay, honey was also in scripture, okay, not only with the promised land, honey was a symbol of good health, okay? So I'm just going to write good health. Kevin, if you go to 1 Samuel 14, 24 through 27, okay, honey is viewed as good health. This is really an interesting dialogue, but we'll expand on this a little bit later too, but think about this. The men of Israel were worn out that day. For Saul had placed the troops under an oath. And the man who eats food before evening, uh, before I've taken vengeance on my enemies is cursed. So Kevin, at that point, they're not allowed to eat anything. So none of the troops tasted any food. I love verse 25. Everybody went into the forest. As they went into the forest, can you imagine? There was honey on the ground. Like in my mind, I'm thinking Winnie the Pooh. Ooh, hey, you know, like he's all excited. But the soldiers, if they're seeing honey, Kevin, what are they saying? Uh-oh. I can't eat it. Honey is everywhere. And in verse 26, it says this, when the troops entered the forest, they saw the flow of honey, but none of them ate it, any of it, because they feared the oath and that they would get caught sticking to it. <laughs> that doesn't say that, but that's the picture. They feared the oath of not eating. And then if they did, what was going to happen? A curse was going to come onto these soldiers. Verse 27. However, Jonathan, this is really interesting, had not heard his father make the troops swear the oath. And so Jonathan, he reached out with the end of his staff he was carrying and he dipped it into the honeycomb. Kevin, I think you have another picture, don't you? He dipped it into the honeycomb, right? This would be a picture. And when he ate the honey, look what happened. He had renewed energy. Like, I have to be honest, like, 
I feel like a new man after I took some of this. Drink some more. Okay. Because it's good for you. Mm. <laughs> Jonathan ate the honey, and he was like, that's better than Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. He had renewed health, renewed energy, and so like, all, all you're going to see here in this image is like, it's good for you. Okay, so again, a couple images. And by the way, it was everywhere. All right, let's keep going to number three. Honey, if you would see in Genesis 43, 11, honey was a, an actual honored gift. Genesis 43, 11 says this, Then their father Israel said to them, If it must be so, then do this. Put some of the best products of the land. Why? Because who's already ahead of them, Kevin? What's the son? Joseph's there, so now the father is giving their sons some gifts. And he says, you put some of the best products of the land in your packs and take them down to the man as a gift. And oh, by the way, here's what I want you to take. Some balsam and some honey, uh, aromatic, aroma, aromatic gum and resin, pistachios and almonds. This is quite like, this sounds like a bag I would have on an airplane. And so let's keep going here with the scriptures. Number four, which is what we've already alluded to, is, is Proverbs 24, verse 13. It is clear that honey is also listed as wisdom. You eat honey, by the way, it's good. The honeycomb is sweet to your palate. But in Proverbs 24, 14, realize that as you partake in this, I want you to have the same mentality that that's, that's what wisdom does. So there's this comparison that when you're taking this, you're opening up yourself to wisdom. Not literally drinking this, do you get wisdom? But there is that comparison. There is that, hey, by the way, this is what it's pointing to. Health, abundance, it's a gift, brings about wisdom. And then I really like this one, number five. Um, Going to go to Matthew 3, 1 through 4. Before I even write down the answer here, I want to read it first. It says, in those days, John the Baptist, he came, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, verse 2. Here's what he's saying. Repent, because the kingdom of heaven has come near, verse 3. For he is the one spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, who said, a voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make his path straight, verse 4. John himself had a camel hair garment with a leather, leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. It's a good cover-up for locusts. Just It takes away the crunch a little bit. It softens it. <laughs> and so just simply, can I just state the obvious? I mean, it's food. Wild honey is just simply, it can be food. Now, here's what I want to do before we come back to the number six. I want to talk a little bit about different kinds of honey, okay? So when John the Baptist is eating honey, he's eating locusts, okay? There's at least, I have four words uh, in the Hebrew that references honey, okay? Rich, you are my Hebrew scholar now. Oh, no. And so... Uh, I'm going to just write some of these words, and Rich, you're going to pronounce them if you don't mind, okay, because you're the one learning it right now, so it's... Honey, <laughs> honey. Y-A-A-R. Ya'ar. Ya'ar, okay? This is the honey of the bees. This is also known as honey found in the woods. Oh, with poo. With what? Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> yeah, with Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> I thought you said something else. I didn't hear the Winnie part. I just heard the poo part. <laughs> All right, so there's a kind of honey that's found in the wild. May maybe this is what we're even talking about here. Now, Rich, there's another kind, and they're all going to feel very similar, okay? Like, there's going to feel very, very similar here. This one here is kind of interesting. N-O-P-H-E-T-H. -E Nofeth. Nofeth, okay? It's honey that drips. Okay, to give you an illustration of the honey that we're talking about, if you go to Psalm uh, 19, verse 10, this would be one of the types of honey. So you have the wild honey, honey that drips. Again, some of this all might feel very similar, uh, but this is what we're talking about here. There's a more desirable than gold. They're an abundance of pure gold and sweeter than honey, which comes from the honeycomb. This is the reference of nofeth, okay? The honey that drips from the honeycomb. All right, a couple more here, Rich. You're doing good on honey. Remember, I have never just taught on one word, the word honey. Deb. No, that's not it. That's Deb. 
D-E-B-A-S-H. Debosh? Debosh. Uh, it's also known as a vegetable honey. Uh, a bee honey, a vegetable honey distilled from trees. So there is a little bit of a difference. So you have wild honey, you have honey that drips. This is known as the vegetable honey that is distilled from trees. And this one is specifically, remember the Genesis 43, 11, the gift honey? Remember the honey that the, the father said, hey, take this to Joseph because we know like this is the kind of honey that he's talking about, okay? Okay, last one here. Uh, Rich, we'll see if we can get this one. T-S-O-P-H. To soft. Tsaf. It is the cells of honeycomb full of honey. And this again would be Proverbs 16, 24. This is the kind of honey that we're talking about here. Today in, uh, well, not really what we've been talking about this week. Pleasant words are a honeycomb, sweet to the taste and health to the body. This is the kind of honey that we're talking about, okay? These kind of four different words, okay? All, all very similar. Okay, just kind of giving you a bigger picture here. Now, here's where it really gets interesting. There's about 20,000 species of bees. Seven of the 20,000 species of bees are honeybees. Okay, seven are honeybees. Now, guys, feel free to jump in at any time, but according to creation.com, a honeybee first, okay, this little guy here, a honeybee, must seek, now you got to hear me out on this one, okay? This is going to get kind of fun, okay? The honeybee must seek and collect nectar from uh, uh, certain kinds of flowers, okay? Now, nectar, a thin, easily spoiled sweet li liquid, is transformed by a honeybee to a stable, high-density, high-energy food, all right? Honeybees, this is kind of interesting. Do you know how many stomachs they have? Two. They have two stomachs. One is, Kevin, do you know what the name of the stomachs are? Mm, no. Stomach uh -huh. one and stomach two. <laughs> a honey stomach and a regular stomach. The honey stomach holds the nectar and then the regular stomach holds everything that's regular. <laughs> that's the digest. All right, here's where it could differentiate a little bit, but on average they estimate that these seven honeybees could visit f at least 1,500 flowers to fill their honey stomachs. Okay. And then what they do is in the process, they add enzymes to nectar to begin the conversion to honey. Do you need bees in order for the honey to work? Absolutely. I'm going to say that one more time. Do you need bees in order for honey to work? Absolutely you do. Okay. So these are some of the images that we have now. Okay. I'm going to go to the sixth and final word here. Okay. And then we're going to just see how we can push some buttons today. All right, uh, number six, you're going to see honey. Kevin, you go to Revelation 10, 7 through 11. Revelation 10, 7 through 11. It says this, But in the days of the sound of the seventh angel, when he will blow his trumpet, then God's hidden plan will be completed, as he announced to his servants the prophets. Verse 8, Now the voice that I heard from heaven spoke to me again and said, Go, take the scroll that lies open in the hand of the angel who is standing on the sea and on the land. Verse 9, so I, I went to the angel and I asked him to give me the little scroll. And he said, you take it and eat it. It will be bitter in your stomach, but it will be sweet as honey in your mouth. Verse 10, then I took the little scroll from the angel's hand and I ate it. It was sweet as honey in my mouth, but when I ate it, my stomach became bitter. So in reference to this, uh, you know, what, what, what honey is, what would you say, Kevin, for number six? Sweet. Yeah, honey is sweet. And it, it's a, I'm just going to call it, just so we all have the same image, it's a sweet scroll. Now you have all this in scripture. You have your Hebrew words, you got your honey, what does it look like? Honey is essential, okay? Uh, the honey that we eat is essentially nectar that honeybees have respectively, you ready for this? And repeatedly regurgitated into another bee's mouth or directly into the honeycomb. When you look at the promised land, okay, I think it's a fair statement that there was land flowing with milk and honey. What, just what if, what if the milk and honey in the Old Testament is a foreshadow of the Word of God? Okay, just what if this milk and honey in the Old Testament is constantly a foreshadow of what's to come? You think about all of the analogies, all of the Word in the New Testament about what this looks like. So Kevin, if you would, would you go to 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 2? 
there's a, there's a website, Bible Watchmen, that they put together some of these thoughts that I didn't use all their perspectives, but I do like some of them. And brothers, it says in 1 Corinthians 3, 1, I was not able to speak to you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as babies in Christ. Verse 2, I give you milk to drink, not solid food, because you were not ready for it. In fact, you are still not ready. So there's this image of, hey, I'm giving you milk, but not what? Solid food. I'm, I'm not giving you meat. OK, a couple other things. Can you go to 1 Peter 2, 2? OK, 1 Peter 2, 2. Scripture says this, like newborn infants desire the pure spiritual milk so that you may grow by it for your salvation. So there's this constant image of this milk mentality. Can you go to Hebrews 5, 12 through 14? Scripture just says this, although by this time you ought to be teachers, you need somebody to teach you the basic principles of God's revelation. Again, you need milk, not solid food. Verse 13, now everybody who lives on milk is inexperienced with the message about righteousness because he is an infant. Verse 14, but solid food is for the mature, for those whose senses have been trained to distinguish between good and evil. So Kevin, over and over again, what, what is he telling the audience? You're not ready for what? For the meat. For more. Right. You're not ready for meat. All I'm going to give you is the basics right now because you can't handle the more. It's interesting. If you just pull back for a second, just theologically, in the Old Testament, they weren't ready for more, were they? They were just ready for the milk and honey. They were just ready for the basics. Does that make sense? They weren't ready for more. Again, watch as this continues to unfold. Uh, I think this is really kind of cool. If you go to 1 Samuel 14, verse 29, which we've already referenced. But I want to show you something. I think this is really cool. It says in 1 Samuel 14, 29, it says, Jonathan says, my father has brought trouble to land. Just look at how I have renewed energy because I tasted a little honey. So because of the taste of the honey, it was almost like there was this a, a little bit, just hearing, just be tasting a little bit. I have something new. I've been renewed in my energy. I'm not saying anything theologically. I'm just saying by tasting a little bit of the honey, I have a different perspective. Okay, it's almost like I've been given just, just a little bit more. Okay, if you'll go now, Kevin, to Luke 24, 42 through 45. So in Luke 24, 42 through 45, you know, here we have, Kevin, we've talked about this. Jesus has come back to life already. And so we've gone through this whole process and it says they gave him, the disciples gave him a piece of broiled fish. This is the King James Version and of a honeycomb. And then it continues on in verse 43. He took it and he did eat it before them. Why is this important? Well, first of all, you could say, well, yeah, he was eating a honeycomb. He was eating a part of the fish. What's the big deal? I think it's everything is the big deal. The resurrection has already taken place. He's partaking in something that what has the honey been pointing to? The honey has been constantly pointing to. Now watch, in 2 Corinthians 1.20, this is where I want to go, and hopefully you begin to see all of this come together. For it says this, For every one of God's promises is yes in Him. Therefore the Amen is also spoken through Him by us for God's glory. Here's what I want to say. By Christ, literally sitting on the shore, eating the fish in the, in the honeycomb, you know what He's saying? He's saying, I am the fulfillment of all of the Old Testament promises. Now you could say, well, does he have to eat the honey? He doesn't have to eat the honey. But I think there's something to saying, the land of, uh, that's flowing with milk and honey, you guys, yeah, it's a, it's a promised land, but he is the eternal land. He is the eternal promise. Like, don't get caught up in the land part. He is the eternal promise of the fulfillment of everything. And it's, it's almost like everything of the promised land, the good health, the gift, the wisdom, the food, the sweet scroll. Ultimately, he's saying, I am all of that. And like for me, like you could say, well, Kyle, that's a stretch. It, it might be. But every time I studied the, the honey in the Old Testament, it just feels like it's pointing to something more. And I love this as Jesus is there. He, basically, he's saying, I am the food for the soul. Basically, he is saying, and Kevin, we were talking about this before. The benefits of honey says that honey is the only food that includes all the substances that actually sustains life. This is the only food. Listen to this. That includes all all the substances that sustains life. There's enzymes, there's vitamins, there's minerals, there's water, there's pinocembrum, which actually improves your brain functioning. Everything in honey, it is there. Just what if, what if Christ is saying, I'm, I'm that. 
I am everything that you need. All of this promise that God is saying, I'm going to give, I am the fulfillment of everything that you have been looking for. According to Dr. Kent, uh, Catherine Marengo, okay? Honey is, look at this, a good source of antioxidants, okay? Why is this important? Because it protects your body from cell damage. Imagine if this is who Christ is. He's here to protect you from those things. Honey is an antibacterial and antifungal properties. You know what it does? It kills unwanted bacterial and fungus. Imagine if Jesus is not only your protector, but he's also your defender. Honey also heals wounds. It actually heals the healing time and reduces infections. So drink up. <laughs> uh, in Isaiah, it says that Jesus is the ultimate healer. I love this one. This is kind of a funny one, but it's phytone, phytonutrient powerhouse is honey. And it keeps insects away or shields the plants from ultraviolet uh, ra uh, radiation. I love this one because guess what keeps the, de the demonic away? Guess what keeps away? Yes, even the devil away, the, the world, and even the fleshly things. It's, it's, it's Jesus. Jesus does all of this, you guys. And then the last two, it helps for digestive issues. I'm not sure how that works. <laughs> Except I do know this, is that when you are in the Word of God, there's something soothing that brings peace to your mind. There's something soothing that brings peace to your your soul. And then there's a sixth one. And I think it's just kind of fun. It takes care of sore throats. <laughs> why, why do I go through all of this? Like what, what's the big deal about honey? What's the big deal about comparing? Is honey really all of these things saying that it's going to be the promised land and good health? We're, we're going to actually receive the promised land. You know that, right? The eternal promised land, which comes through him. We are going to receive ultimately good health. We are going to receive the honored gift. We are going to receive the ultimate wisdom and the food and yes, the ultimate truth. And it's all going to come through him. So is that the whole point? It could be. But I also think I want to go back to the little bees. And if we know that we have the truth, then we should do something about it. And what I love is that these bees are actually doing the work constantly. And what are they doing? They're delivering it. If you know the truth about Christ, you guys, we cannot just keep absorbing and absorbing and absorbing all the nectar. We can't just keep absorbing it, absorbing it, absorbing it. Because guess what happens? You get fat, you get comfortable, and the good news never gets delivered. I actually believe we have a role in this. God says, hey, look, you want to experience the truth? Please begin to walk it out and deliver this news to other people. You know, I don't know. For me, honey is to go back to Proverbs, Proverbs 24. Kevin, if you go to the very verse 13 and 14, it, it just says this. And it's pretty straightforward. Eat honey, my son, for it's good. And the honeycomb is sweet to your palate. And when you have this understanding, then you'll realize that wisdom is the same. If you find it, you'll have a future and your hope will never all right, guys, that is Honey 101, maybe Honey 102, maybe Honey 103. But my prayer is that the Lord would bring clarity to something that was taught today that will encourage your soul.